Hello everyone. Welcome to LOMP Special Lecture Series featuring basic TCM and tongue diagnosis made easy, day 7 of 12. We shall discuss topography of the tongue, the strengths and limitations of tongue diagnosis, and order of observation. The tongue is an organ formed of muscle, blood vessels, and nerves. The changes in the shape and color and luster of the fungiform on the tongue lead to changes in the tongue proper. The tongue is the sprout of the heart, and the heart is the supreme monarch of all organs. So, disease of viscera can influence not only the heart, but also the tongue. The tongue coating is a layer-like moss over the tongue surface. The filiform papillae on the surface and back of the tongue relates to changes in tongue coating. Through meridians and collaterals, the tongue directly or indirectly connects with many sangfu organs, especially the heart, spleen, and stomach. Because it is the mirror of the heart, the outward manifestation of the spleen and its coating is the moss-like layer formed by the steaming of stomach chi. Tongue is called the outshow of the spleen. The spleen dominates transportation and transformation. So, the tongue is closely related to splenic function. The manifestations on the tongue are closely related to the condition of chi, blood, body fluid, and their circulation. The tip of the tongue reveals the pathological changes of the heart and lungs. Its border reveals those of the liver and gallbladder. Its central part reveals those of the spleen and stomach, and its root reveals those of the kidneys. The tongue should be observed in direct natural light in the order of coating to the tongue proper and from tip to root. The only good lighting is natural light. If you see a patient on a cloudy dark day, you have to take the patient to stand right next to the window or even outside if necessary. The same applies if you work in a room without windows. You cannot do tongue diagnosis in a dark room the tongue will look much darker than it really is. The patient is required to be in a sitting or supine position and protrude his tongue naturally. Let the patient stick out the tongue no longer than about 15 to 20 seconds. Longer than that, the tongue will become darker. Ask the patient to put the tongue back in and then out again. You can do this several times. Some food and drugs may color the tongue coating and attention should be paid to the exclusion of false phenomena induced by such factors. With seasonal changes, the tongue may have slight changes. For instance, the coating is thicker in summer because of damp excess, and it is thinner and dry in autumn because of seasonal dryness. Age and constitution are also important factors that need to be paid attention to. Cracks on the tongue are often seen in old people, the tongue of fat people is usually bigger and paler, while it is often thinner and red in slim people. Observation of the thickness and moisture of the tongue coating and whether it is easily removed by scraping or not is helpful for diagnosis. For example, damp is predominant in summer and the tongue coating is usually thick. Dryness is prevalent in autumn and the tongue coating then is mostly thin and dry. Normal tongue is of proper size, soft in quality, free in movement, slightly red in color or pale red, and with a thin layer of white coating that is neither dry nor over moist. What to observe? The tongue proper, vitality, color, appearance, movement, reflecting the conditions of the Zangfu organs, chi and blood. Tongue coating, the quality, color, reflecting the depth and nature of disease and the strength of pathogenic qi and antipathogenic qi. A moistened tongue is described as rosy with vitality and it is a favorable sign. A withered tongue is dry without luster and this is an unfavorable sign. The tongue gives the true picture roughly 98% of the time. For example, 
yin or yang deficiency, hot or cold. Strengths of tongue diagnosis. The progress or lack of progress of the disease can be monitored. For example, a purple body color is expected to become less purple. A tongue without coating is expected to develop a coating. Thick coating is expected to become thinner. It is easier than pulse diagnosis and also more objective. Tongue diagnosis is an important tool of diagnosis. The tongue does not always reflect all aspects of a condition. For example, in liver blood deficiency with liver cheese stagnation, the tongue will often reflect liver blood deficiency but not liver cheese stagnation. Do not expect the tongue to reflect all the aspects of a pathology. There is a lack of detail, for example, a thick sticky yellow coating on the root shows damp heat in the lower burner, but not its exact location. Pulse diagnosis can clarify the exact location of damp heat. For example, damp heat in the bladder presents with a wiry pulse in the left chair position. In damp heat in the intestines, the pulse is wiry on both chair positions. Order of observation of the tongue. It is important to analyze the tongue systematically in a certain order. One should not let one's attention be drawn to details of the tongue first. One must look at the tongue systematically, and this is the order recommended. 1. Body color. 2. Body shape. 3. Coating. 4. Moisture. 5. Shen. The importance of looking at a tongue systematically cannot be overemphasized. A pink tongue is healthy and normal. A red tongue may indicate heat in the body like a fever or a hormonal imbalance. A reddish-purple tongue is a sign that there may be inflammation or an infection in the body. A pale pink tongue may be a sign of a vitamin deficiency, a weak immune system, or a lack of energy. So basically, when we, you look at the body color, we determine if there is heat or cold, in or yang deficiency. Body shape. If the tongue is puffy with scalloped edges or indented teeth marks, it may indicate malabsorption of nutrients. A very thin tongue may be a sign of dehydration. So basically, we would uh, look at the body shape to determine a shoe or deficiency condition or a sure or excess condition. Tongue coating. A thick coating reflects poor intestinal health or digestive issues. A yellowish coating indicates there may be an infection in the body. A gray or blackish coating indicates a long-term digestive disorder or that something may be very wrong with your body's health. And a thick white coating means there may be poor circulation to the extremities or possibly a yeast infection. So we would look at the tongue to actually look at the condition of the stomach, which is a full organ, uh, to determine if it's a hot or cold condition or a shoe or shear condition. Moisture will determine the state of body fluids to find out if it is a cold or heat condition, yang deficiency or in deficiency. In general, the body color will tell us more about the zhang organs and the coating will determine the condition of the fu or the hollow organs. The first impression we get from the tongue is whether there is shen. 
Shen in this context means vitality and refers to the general appearance of the tongue. It is the same kind of Shen that we talk about as being visible when the eyes or face have Shen. A tongue with Shen radiates vitality, flexibility, and is not limp or stiff. The tongue should radiate the same energy that a live fish has, not a fish that has been lying around for a couple of days on a fishmonger's slab. Shen in this context is mainly used for prognosis. A tongue with Shen means that although there may be many signs of a serious imbalance in the body, the patient's Zheng Qi or upright Qi is still strong and pathogenic factors are not deeply rooted. This means that the imbalance can be rectified. The absence of Shen in these situations, though, is serious and can indicate that the condition is deep-rooted and therefore more difficult to rectify. The tongue color refers to the color of the tongue body itself and not the coating. If the coating is so thick that you cannot see the tongue body, the colors on the underside of the tongue may give an indication of the color of the tongue surface. The color of the tongue can be used to diagnose conditions of heat, cold, yin deficiency, yang deficiency, qi deficiency, and blood deficiency, as well as the state of the Zhangfu organs. The color of the tongue can give an idea of how deep pathogenic factor has penetrated into the body. The color should always be seen in relation to the shape of the tongue. These two aspects cannot be seen separately from each other and they are the single most important aspect of tongue diagnosis. In cases where you are unsure of your tongue diagnosis because of conflicting information, it is the tongue's color that should determine the diagnosis because it is the most important aspect. This is because the color of the tongue body reflects the long-term influences and the underlying patterns of imbalance. The shape of the tongue includes the tongue size, physical shape, whether there are cracks on the surface, and the length and mobility of the tongue. The tongue shape will mainly reflect whether there is a deficiency or excess condition. The tongue shape will give an impression of the condition of qi and blood, as well as whether wind and dampness are present. The shape of the tongue will also reflect the severity and duration of the imbalance. The tongue coating is a natural consequence of transformation of the ingested food and liquids in the stomach. It is some of the dirty residue rising upwards along with the pure chi that has been separated from the impure dross. The tongue coating should be thin enough to enable the tongue itself to be seen through the coating. The tongue should look like a wheat field in the spring when the wheat has sprouted and is just beginning to push its way up through the soil. The soil can still be clearly seen, but the field has a green hue, and when you look closer, you can distinguish the individual wheat sprouts. Similarly, you should be able to see the body of the tongue through the coating, and the coating should look like small individual dots on the tongue. The coating will be thickest in the middle, and at the rear. This is because these areas of the tongue correspond to the stomach and intestine, which are the organs that receive and transport the impure residue that is left behind after the transformation of the pure qi. This is reflected in these areas having a thicker and dirtier coating than the rest of the tongue. An alternative explanation for why the coating is naturally thicker on the rear of the tongue is that some of the impure residue from the transformation process rises from the stomach and ascends towards the mouth. This impure residue settles on the back of the tongue as it is this part of the tongue that it hits first. This is likened to when steam rises upwards from a kettle and condenses on the bottom of a window pane, but the upper part of the glass is still transparent and dry. The coating on the tongue does not usually extend to or cover the sides or the tip. The tongue coating primarily reflects 
whether a condition is excess or deficient in nature, whether the condition is hot or cold, and the condition of the Fu organs. The coating is not necessarily directly associated with the tongue color and shape, and therefore can be viewed separately in certain situations. The tongue coating can be used to rapidly differentiate the eight principles. Observation of the tongue coating is particularly relevant in acute conditions. This is because the coating is the aspect of the tongue that is quickest to change. It can change by the hour. In an acute invasion of pathogenic factor, it is sometimes possible to observe changes in the coating in the front third of the tongue, especially the outer edge of this area. If pathogenic factor penetrates deeper into the body, the coating will change by becoming thicker in the central areas of the tongue and possibly also changing color and consistency. It is not only exogenous invasions that can produce rapid changes in the tongue coating. Food stagnation will also manifest with changes in the tongue coating relatively quickly. A general rule of thumb is the thicker the coating, the stronger the pathogenic factor. If an organ is yin deficient, the tongue may manifest with a lack of coating in the area of the tongue that corresponds to that organ. A healthy coating should have root, be evenly distributed, and be slightly moist. Having root means that the coating should appear to be growing out of the tongue and not just lying on top of the tongue. If we go back to the metaphor of a wheat field, the wheat should appear to be growing up through the soil and not lying uprooted on the top of the earth like mown grass. When a coating lacks root, it can be easily scraped off. This is because the stomach, spleen, and kidney are not functioning as they should and a new healthy coating is not being formed to replenish the existing coating from below. The old coating eventually loses its connection to its root and starts to fall off. A rootless coating is always indicative of a deficiency condition. There may be a rootless coating in the early morning upon waking. This is because the stomach and spleen are inactive at night and have therefore not created a new coating on the tongue whilst the person slept. The coating also gives an impression of the development of a pathological condition. The coating suddenly disappearing in a disease is a negative sign, even if the coating was excessively thick. Intuitively, a thick coating disappearing might seem to be a positive development, but it is only positive if the change is gradual and not sudden. If the change is sudden, it is probably due to yin or qi being damaged by the pathogenic factor. A coating that suddenly becomes thick is usually seen when dampness blocks the middle jaw. When exogenous pathogenic factor invades the body, the changes in the coating will usually only be seen in the front third of the tongue and the sides of this area. If the coating begins to thicken further towards the center of the tongue, and if the coating changes color from white to yellow and starts to dry out, this indicates that pathogenic factor has started to penetrate the interior and began to generate heat. This process can often be quite rapid. In interior pathological conditions, the distribution of the coating will indicate where the imbalance is in the body and which organs are most likely to be affected. The color and texture of the coating will give an indication of what type of imbalance is probable. One should therefore observe whether the coating is thicker or thinner in certain areas of the tongue and whether there is a difference in the condition of the coating in these areas. Now this is the picture of a normal tongue. Body color should be pale red. Body shape, not thin, not swollen, not stiff, not flabby, without cracks. Coating should be thin and white. Moisture, slightly moist. The shen should be with shen, fresh, radiant, brilliant. The tongue, as with many other parts of the body, reflects the condition of the various internal organs. This is seen in both the tongue's general appearance and changes in specific areas of the tongue. In the, this model that you see, the tongue is divided into three zones, 
Each zone represents one of the three jowls. The upper jowl can be seen in the front third of the tongue. The posterior third of the tongue is the lower jowl, and in between them is the middle jowl. The tip of the tongue reflects the heart, and the area behind the tip reflects the lung. So the heart is the tip of the tongue. The sides would represent the liver. And the sides and tip would be the liver and the heart. The center is the stomach. The stomach and spleen would be the sides in the central section. The lungs, the front third. The following tongue images will help us differentiate between liver and spleen swelling. This is liver swelling. As you can see, uh, there's uh, swelling on the sides of the tongue. And this is spleen swelling. There's a thickening on the central middle third of the tongue. This is also an example of uh, spleen swelling. Still spleen swelling. The chest area is on the sides of the tongue between the center part and the tip. The chest area reflects a pathology of three organs, heart, lungs, or breast in women. It is important to differentiate between changes in the sides due to the liver, spleen, or chest. Differentiation between liver, stomach or spleen, and chest areas. So here you could see a thin long band which represents a liver involvement. Then the next, uh, the the image beside it would be a broadband middle section representing the stomach or the spleen. Here is an example of uh, a tongue picture uh, representing the, the chest or breast. The chest area reflects pathologies of the lungs, heart or breast, but in a Western medical sense. A change in the chest area may involve a change in color or body shape. How to differentiate when a change in the chest area indicates a problem of the lungs or heart or of the breast in women? A change in the chest area indicates a pathology of the breast in women rather than that of the lungs or heart. In the absence of an obvious lungs or heart pathology, and especially when it is unilateral. Examples of lung pathology manifesting in the chest area are chronic asthma or chronic emphysema in which case the chest area would be swollen and possibly purple. An example of heart pathology is chronic coronary heart disease, in which case the chest area would be purple. As the area on the sides between the center and the tip reflects the condition of the heart, lungs, breast, this is called the chest area. So here are examples of tongue images representing the swollen chest area and a purple chest area. Apart from a purple color and the swelling, other possible changes in the breast area are teeth marks, confined only to the breast area, red points or the absence of coating of the breast area. Teeth marks only in the breast area indicate usually a problem in the breast in women, possibly carcinoma, occurring against a background of severe chi deficiency. Red points in the breast area indicate toxic heat in the lungs or breast. The absence of coating in the breast area indicates a possible problem in the breasts in women occurring against a background of indeficiency. 
So here are examples of tongue images, teeth marks, uh, breast area on the left. Then uh, you see teeth marks on the breast area on the right. Red points, breast area on the right. And no coating, breast area on the left side. The tip reflects a pathology of the heart in a Chinese sense that is problems of the Shen, while the chest area reflects a pathology of the heart in the Western sense, for example, coronary heart disease. So if you would focus your attention to the image on the left, so we have here a case of heart heat resulting from emotional problems. So the tip here actually represents the Shen while the image on the right is heart blood stasis because you see uh, the heart or the chest area, the heart western sense on the left side. The same area on the sides that reflects the liver in women also reflects the uterus, especially when it is purple. The sides indicate the state of the liver, but when they are purple, in women, they may indicate blood stasis in the uterus. Okay, so here you can see examples of tongue images. Okay, thank you very much for your attention.